particularly went to Mitchell Splain's office two days ago to stand in the queue and listen to the issues of what the community of Mitchell's Plain are facing with home affairs. So the issues that I'm going to raise are practical issues, Honorable Minister, and I hope that you take it in the spirit that I'm raising it. Unfortunately, Honorable Minister, there are no new good, good news to report. There are constant complaints from the people standing in the queue and the frustrations of the people I'm going to share with you this morning. One constant complaint, which is the age old story, which many members have raised earlier on, is the long queues that have been experienced in the office. And I want to take the minister back on the 22nd of April 2018, the then Minister of Home Affairs actually launched the Horn Cues campaign. And the aim at the time was to address the hours and in some cases days where residents would have to stand in the queue from early in the morning for their IDs, their passport and their birth certificate. And one of the ladies in the queue, Honorable Minister and Deputy Minister, was she received a, a number on the Thursday and she wasn't helped and had to come back on the Friday to meet just plain home affairs office. And then the system was off offline. So when the minister talks about he shared the frustrations, I don't think the minister understand the frustration some of our communities go through. It is not comparable with due respect, honorable minister. Honorable Mozzoledi, in November 29, your department briefed a committee on the whole of queues and said there were a number of obstacles were to blame, including high client volumes, the discontinuation of the Saturday hours, inefficient controls of the queue amongst other things. And the greatest obstacle was obviously the unreliable and often online IT system, which you've mentioned again today, but you didn't mention a plan to fix this. We know that the online IT system falls under the authority of CETA, but given the service provided by Home Affairs, the ultimate buck stops with the minister. Earlier this year, we also know the Committee of Home Affairs expressed its disappointment with the department to resolve these IT challenges that continue to hamper your ability to deliver service. And today, the Honorable Minister rightfully so admitted it. But it's been more than three years since the war on queues began. And from where I and the people of Mitchell's Plain are standing, the national government has lost the war. So today, Honorable Minister, I'm going to give you another opportunity and ask you a series of questions about this or on cues. What is your department doing about the issue? What are the timelines that the department and CETA have agreed to in order to fix the IT system? How is it possible that despite decades of dealing with the same problem, your predecessors, that we are dealing with the same problems we had 20 years ago, the IT system? And I can share with you, Minister, 20 years ago when I went for my ID at Home Affairs in Weinberg, I stood in the queue and the system was offline. The other day I took my 16 year old daughter, we stood in the queue and the system was offline. The same issue for over 20 years. What are you going to do differently, Honorable Minister, that your predecessors could not fix? These are the questions that millions of people has been asking from Home Affairs for decades now. We need the Honourable Minister to be clear and honest with timelines so the public can have faith in home affairs that continuously to destroy the trust relationship between the government and the people. Honourable Minister, in many of our communities, refugees are struggling, and it's been mentioned before by other speakers, to, uh, for the poor slow delivery from home affairs to access documents. These individuals have left their homes looking for a better opportunity. And as humanitarians, it is our responsibility to assist them with proper documentation. We have received so many complaints from refugees who've not been able to renew their documentation. And they are being arrested by communities in police and generally cannot get around because they're unable to produce any sort of documentation. The minister has said nothing about this today. I urge and call on the minister to use your powers and urgently open the relevant office to ensure individuals can access these services. One story in particular, honorable minister, and it's quite heartbreaking. A young refugee man here in Cape Town has been offered a life-changing opportunity to study in the USA on a full funded bursary. He is no expense to the state, but he's missing the opportunity because he has not been able to secure travel documents from your department. Your department is aware of this minister and I've even emailed your office and I won't share the email address here obviously, but I've emailed your office, your minister and they have not even given me an acknowledgement of receipt 
Honorable Minister, directly from your office on this particular case. And I must say there has been officials replying to me, but they're saying, Member of Parliament, the Minister will have to make this ultimate uh, 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 final decision on this matter. And sadly, Minister, your office didn't even have the decency to acknowledge a receipt of those emails, Minister, and that is quite sad. So you cannot win the war on cues, the war on system, if your good office, the highest office in this country, does not even acknowledge receipt of communication from members of parliament, the whole is already lost, Honorable Minister. Minister, and there's another matter that has been raised earlier on by my colleague on the issues of retention letters that are not being processed. This is a massive impact on families that require these important documents. I also have received requests from your from people even your own twitter account as of two days ago people reply and tag them but your twitter account home affairs is not responding on this matter that office has been closed since uh, march of last year and there's no indication from your good office as to when people can reply people have lost their citizenship others had to pay massive fees and uh, others are just wait and see what your department is doing and sadly minister bizarrely there's a company called Immigration Boutique, and this is for you and the DG, who's charged a massive fee to, to help people get this done. How is it possible that a company minister that called Immigration Boutique provides such a service to law-abiding citizens, but your department cannot do it? It is really worth in looking into, and I hope the minister and the deputy minister and the DG can address this matter. Honorable Minister, there are so many other issues we can raise here today. Registration of birth for people in rural areas. And we talk about Charlotte McClake had this in 150 years, but the greatest joy to the late Charlotte McClake Minister will be to deliver services to rural black women on time and issue their documents. That is how you honor the legacy of somebody. By not delivering services, you're delivering an injustice to 150 years of history. I hope that the minister can respond and share a clear implementable plan with timelines on how to fix his department based on experience or non-communication from his own office. I suspect it's unlikely to happen, members. The inefficiency of home affairs members have a real impact on every single person in South Africa. A person cannot travel legally, apply for a job legally, grant or rent a home, even RDP homes, without having the proper documents. And this department, by not being fixed, is an economic opportunity lost for our children and our youth. And the minister mentioned 45 years of our youth of 1976, the greatest joy, the greatest legacy will be to ensure our youth of 2021 have their documentation so they can apply for job opportunities. That's how you restore legacy and dignity to youth, given the terrible history where we come from. I hope the minister and the department understands the importance of their department and the, the support that they will give for dignity for our youth by ensuring they have the proper documentation. This department is the most important department yes, in the country. There's nothing you can do without home affairs. If home affairs is fixed, South Africa will work. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Mackenzie, you have said a mouthful and I've heard you with both ears. You have raised many important pertinent issues. Although most of your colleagues were just throwing mud and mud around, uh, which of course won't stick. You raise pertinent issues that are practical. And Honorable McKenzie, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, South Africa will only work and it is working because there is a Department of Home Affairs. Nobody in this country will get Sasa uh, 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 money, 17 million people every month without identification of home affairs. And those long queues you see from Sasa, they all have documentation from home affairs. No student will ever write metric without any documentation from home affairs. The fact that hundreds of thousands of students wrote metric last year is because they've got IDs, identification from home affairs. Nobody will get a university degree and be accredited and graduate and thousands graduates every year because they got documentation of home affairs. 
Millions of you have got bank accounts. None of you will have opened any bank account without documentation of form affairs. Lawyers in the courts of law in this country will never finalize the execution of estates without a gazette to that effect being printed by government printing works in home affairs. You are going to go for local government elections very soon. There is nobody who's going to vote who's not on the voter's roll. And there will be 26 million people on the voter's roll. That voter's roll was compiled by the IEC with information from home affairs. Each and every one of the 26 million people appearing on that voter's roll compiled by the IEC has got clear and credible documentation from home affairs. None of you could have gone to any overseas visit without getting documents from home affairs. We are now busy vaccinating South Africans and millions of them, more than 40 million will be vaccinated. They all are registering with documentation from home affairs. As I'm speaking now, at the last count, we had more than 400,000 IDs in home affairs offices, which are uncollected, they are ready. Despite us sending SMS to people, they are not coming to, 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 to collect them. But I just want to mention these few facts to show that indeed the Home Affairs Department is the anchor of the economic activity, their social life, their legal system of the country. They all depend on Home Affairs. And if anything goes wrong there, all those will, will not be able to move. So where are the problems? I have not hit in any problem today. I came up very clear and open that our original scene, as you also identify Mr. McKenzie, is the IT system. That is the original scene of home affairs. And every day when I go back to work, this is the original scene I am trying to resolve because we have done away with manual system and introduced a, a live capture about eight years ago. And while many government departments depend on, on state information technology agency for their information services, if anything goes wrong with them, the other departments won't feel it, but Home Affairs will definitely feel it. To the extent where chairperson, when this original scene of IT system gave us headaches, because many of us in the department are not IT experts, we went to the headquarters of CETA, which is providing these services in Centurion. We put up a whole room. We called all the IT companies in the country that are providing this service. IBM, EOH, later replaced by Gijima, BBD and D, Shannon, you name them. We even called their CEOs to sit there and help us resolve this IT system, the original scene of Home Affairs. We are going to make inroads because we have actually identified why SARS doesn't have systems down. Uh, we have actually identified that it's because it has been exempted from getting these services through CETA. And we are working with Treasury to do that. There, there is this song that is being sung, Honorable Luchil, about the GPW being on the verge of collapse. Uh, fortunately, the Home Affairs Portfolio Committee did an oversight there two weeks ago. They are aware of who is feeding this poison. GPW is not about to collapse. I've just announced here that IEC bought VMDs, voter management devices. They cost 3 million rand. Treasury did not even have a cent to buy those VMDs that will make elections free and fair and credible. That money comes from government printing works. The one you claim is about to collapse. It is not going to do so. Now, Chairperson, as I said, IEC is going to collapse. Conclude, uh, Minister, please. Excuse me? Can you please conclude? Your time is over. Yes, yes, I'm, I've concluded. I'm just saying IEC will conduct in free, fair, and credible elections, as I said, because Home Affairs will provide them with a means to do so. So, Chairperson, in due course, I will provide this program, which Honorable McKenzie is talking about, because We've been developing it a long time ago. 
to solve the original scene of home affairs, which is causing all these problems that members have been talking about the whole day here. Thank you very much.